welcome to Bollywood to Hollywood uh, with Rao Ram Pilla. Uh, we have a special guest today, a French director and a novelist, uh, Mr. Olivier. And recently, he did this movie where I met you uh, in Tunisia, uh, Solil's. Solil means uh, son, right? Sons. Yeah. So Solil's is sons. So we'll come to that. Um, so uh, what we are, let's, let's see your uh, commercial life before we go into your uh, film life. Uh, let's, let's see the uh, commercial we have. Uh, so this is your uh, Clio commercial. Um, it, it, it looks good, but uh, uh, the last one we saw was uh, from Russia, but this one is from uh, Arabic country. So it's quite a contrast, a cultural contrast. Um, you have anything to say about it? Uh, yes, yeah, so, so it was the same uh, thing that the, the, with the Russian one. Uh, so it was a big campaign for Clio, and each time it was uh, shot in the original language, uh -huh. so in Russia, in Russian, uh, in uh, in Arabia, in in Arabic. Um, after we shot in China, and uh, we shot another one in uh, Sicily. Uh, so each time in different languages. Also, and it was great because it was really uh, a real experience of, uh, in fact, of cinema even if it was commercial, but it was really made like little films, and it was made with a real master of, of commercials, a guy called uh, Barry Myers, who was a fantastic director, and with whom I learned a lot. And well, uh, you also did uh, another commercial. Well, you had an umpteen number, but with Cindy Crawford, right? Yes. Uh, um, and then uh, you started filming and films, uh, you have uh, affinity towards uh, African themes. Uh, since you married a Turkish lady, I would have thought maybe to the uh, Arabic themes. What is yeah. it that inspires towards these African themes? You know, it's, in fact, it's really related with, uh, with I would say, with people. Uh, it started when uh, we were shooting commercials in South Africa. I uh, had a lot of admiration for what uh, was doing Mandela and, and the ANC during the, the 90s. Uh -huh. So I read uh, Mandela's um, book, A Long Walk to Freedom, and I found it absolutely fascinating. And one of the things which uh, I found very interesting is that this man was driven by um, values uh, which were very African and very interesting and values that we could totally understand. Uh -huh. uh, one of them, when they went to power, uh -huh. and, and uh, they, uh, after, so uh, it was in 94, uh, one of the things that they did in order to get out of the apartheid and to, to, to try to have people living together, I mean white people and black people, they made this uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And Truth and Reconciliation Commission is a pure product of African uh, justice, sense of justice. So I found it very, very interesting. So that's why I decided to make a feature film set in South Africa, and it was The Wooden Camera. Then, when I was uh, presenting the wooden camera, somebody told me, uh, it was in France, somebody told me, ah, I have a subject for you, it's, um, uh, it's a portrait of a man who has been the second president of Upper Volta. 
I uh, did not know him. I had no special interest in that kind of uh, character. Just to be polite, I read uh, the diary of this person that um, uh, I was given. Mm -hmm. And I was, when I read it, I really fall in love with this man who was absolutely fantastic. He was a very simple man. He was absolutely not an educated man like, uh, like Mandela or like uh, Sangor. Or, but he was driven by the same values and principles than uh, Mandela was driven with. And for me, it was very interesting. And I thought, OK, it means that maybe from south to north of Africa, there is a common things, and, and it would be very interesting to... Uh, so I tried to make a, a documentary about this man, who was still alive at this time, he was 90 years old. And uh, one day, so I wanted to replace, in fact, his, uh, his life and uh, what he did into the history of uh, Africa. So it was including uh, the slavery and the, the colonization and so on. So it was something very big and nobody wanted to, to, to make it. And this man, uh, this president, who was called Lamizana, uh, one day he died. And I was very, uh, of course, very sad, but I did not want to, to stop to make this, um, this documentary. Mm -hmm. And I met a man who told me, but you know, my father knew very well this man and could talk about him. And the father of uh, this man, it was Sotigi Kouyaté, who was the biggest African actor, was working with uh, Peter Brook in, in France, mm -hmm. he uh -huh. in Mahabharata with Peter Brook. And in fact, he started with Peter Brook uh, in early 80s, and he never stopped because Peter Brook really adored him, and he made everything with him, and uh, they went together to Africa and so on. Uh, so he became very important for Peter Brook, but, but for many people. Uh -huh. and, uh, really, this man, Sotigi, he is the the, the most beautiful person I've What's never What's his name? Sotigi Kuyate. Sotigi. Sotigi Kuyate, you see, it's here you have this picture. I don't know if you see it. Uh -huh. So it's, uh, it was on newspaper when he died. He died uh, some years ago. Oh. So effectively, Sotigi had known very well uh, this president, Lamizana. And uh, so we we tried to make this um, this uh, documentary together, but uh, we could not. I could not find the finance. On one day, Satigi told me, "But why don't you write uh, uh, a screenplay of a feature film?" Uh -huh. uh, I thought, "Ah, he is right. Uh, we are together since many years. Uh, he, we have spoken a lot about African Sun, and I would like to do something." And so the next day, I sat on my, in my office, on my table, and I started a trip with Sotigi, going like that, mm -hmm. and, and I wrote Soleil. Uh, I wrote it in five weeks, and, and, I, and it was just at the beginning, I did not know what I was writing. I knew that it was about Africa, and Sotigi was driving us somewhere. And, and it was really the only thing I, I knew. So and it came like that. And in fact, I built it like a, a, a philosophical tale. You know, so it's a, a philosophical tale like people uh, like uh, Voltaire or mm -hmm. Diderot uh, wrote. Um, during this process, I proposed to the, one of the sons of Sotigi, who uh, was one uh, of my friends, who is also a director. I said, to him, why don't we do this film together? Uh, we had already some other projects and so on. I said, look, uh, I really don't know what you are writing, but finish to write it, and when it's written, uh, I read, and, and uh, so we will see. So I finished to, to write a script, sent it to, to him, and we say, okay, let's do it. Uh, so it was written for Sotigi, who and unfortunately, at this moment, he was already very sick, very ill, and he died uh, some months later. Mm -hmm. uh, but we did the film. We found um, another actor. And uh, so this film is quite original for 
some things. The first one is that it is a film which is, which is really the vision of an African on a European, or Burkinabis on the French, uh, about Africa and about the relationship between Africa and Europe, or Western world. Uh, maybe the second originality is that um, it's a film uh, which shows a positive view of Africa. Uh -huh. and when you think all the films which are made about Africa are all negative, it's always about war, about uh, children in war, about AIDS, about uh, corruption and so on. Uh, the only exception being Mandela. Mandela, okay, fantastic, he is an icon. All the other things in Africa, it's always sadness and so on. And it's not the view that we have, and it's not the view that we have developed in, in this film. And what we wanted to say in this film is that, look, Africa may have something to tell us, and we should be more curious about it. Let's watch the trailer and see, let the audience know a little bit about the film. Okay. Could we run the t uh, trailer, please? had no reason, their hate was their poison, their laws were a prison, their love had no season, the future no vision, they killed father and son, oh, what a long walk to Reconciliation, the birth of a nation. Oh, what a long walk to freedom. Oh, what a long walk to freedom. It's kind of rediscovery of the roots. And basically, you are symbolically using this uh, character, uh, uh, Dokamisa, to find out uh, what really to be an African and uh, feel proud of their heritage. Uh, even before all these revolutions, uh, you mentioned in your film, there was a, a Mandali Charter before the French Declaration of uh, uh, man or uh, American Declaration of Independence or Magna Carta in British uh, England, you know. Then it's the journey. So he takes this uh, uh, Dokamisa onto the journey. Yes. I, wa I was thinking, uh, yeah, I was thinking about uh, uh, yeah, this. Uh, you know Harry Potter, <laughs> he goes on a journey, and they have the similar car, but they go into the train and things fly. Because you, you take us from the 13th century to the modern times as we, as we go in this journey. Uh, who is the, this great uncle who helped her, her grandfather, which, who lived in the 13th century? It's kind of a fairy tale and interesting. Um, and then uh, you take it to the uh, intellectuals you know, from the journey to the uh, slowly to the uh, white magic uh, and to the, uh, th there is a 
the white, I call it white magic because it turns everyone into a, a kind of a slave tool. Uh, so I, am I right in, uh, in, 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 in describing the way I'm describing? So, it's your film, so uh, yeah, there is this. Uh, uh, yeah, no, what you're saying is right. Uh, in fact, the, the, the story is that uh, at the beginning, uh, Doc Camisa, who is the granddaughter of um, the Emperor uh, Sunjata, yeah. Yeah. is, uh, is uh, sick, uh, she is ill, and her illness is that she has lost uh, memory, the memory of her uh, ancestors and uh, the memory of her uh, history, and she does not dream. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, uh, Sotigi will um, uh, try to bring her back, to, 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 to save her by bringing her back to her roots and to give her the possibility of dreaming. Um, so, of course, the Kamisa is a kind of metaphor of Africa. Uh -huh. uh, uh, so the story of Africa, uh, you, you know, so the, um, the the speech of uh, of uh, Sarkozy in Dakar three years ago or four years ago, uh -huh. Uh -huh. he said that um, to African, he said, now uh, you should uh, try to come to history. You until now you have not history. You are you are not playing in history. You should go come to history. And, and it, so it was a big scandal and so on. And this is coming from uh, uh, something that um, Hegel, the, the German philosopher, the said. The intellectuals, right? right? Yeah. He said is that, uh, no, um, Africa has no history. So we colonize them after uh, changing them to, to uh, slave, putting them to slavery. We colonize them and we convince them that uh, before us, they were nothing. They had no, no history and so on. Uh, so it's what we are showing in the, in uh, in this film. Um, and so the Camisa has no recollection of her past, but the, she has a past. So Sotigi will give her the way to go back to her past and to her roots. So that's uh, the story of the old film. So it's a long, uh, long way. You also. Can we have those uh, pictures, intellectual? Yeah, uh, from these intellectuals. Then you go to these couple of uh, people who are like jokers. Uh, so uh, is this a comic relief like Shakespeare does in his uh, place? Because that was kind of interesting. Uh, so it, it's um, uh, the whole process of of uh, Sotigi to bring. Uh, so uh, Doc Camisa back to life, in fact, goes through tales. He, he tells her uh, uh, many tales. And one of the tales is um, around truth and, and a lie. And uh, as the film is a very, the form of the film is very free because I wrote it as a as a as a philosophical tale. Uh -huh. uh, can play as we want. So when we uh, when uh, we can uh, come from the 13th century to the 21st century and then back to the 18th century and so on, and sometimes we can be in reality or in tale or in. Uh, so when he speaks about uh, uh, lie on on uh, lie on uh, truth. Um, so we, we are with them, and, and because it was funny to have those two characters, and um, so it was for the pleasure. Yeah, so yeah. I see that uh, 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 this kind of imagination, you, though it's it's good, but uh, where did you get this get this idea of this journey going on a, a car going back to <clears> the <throat> 13th century, then back to 21st, uh, I mean, 21st century and all that. I, I thought that to, uh, to say what I wanted to say about Africa, uh, I did not want to set up a, a, a normal story just now. Or, or, uh, I wanted to go through many, many things. So this, uh, this way of writing, 
uh-huh. which is certainly not the, the normal way of writing. You know, now all the scripts um, have to be written more or less the same the same way. You you have people who are always trying to say yes at this time you must have that kind of thing happening and at this time that time of thing happening and so on. And for me, it does not work. Or I mean, it can work, but it's not the only way to tell a story uh-huh. or, to, or to say something. When you read Voltaire or when you read uh, Diderot or many people. You, you don't say, you don't tell them, oh, but your dramaturgy is not uh, correct. It's, uh, you should, uh, no, you read, and if it's interesting, you read it and you like it. So I uh, wrote it like that. Um, and it gave me, in fact, a lot of freedom. So after it was a question of imagination, going to uh, some, uh, some uh, this century to another century, and uh, going to this, uh, playing with so the characters and so on. It was just uh, the, the pleasure of creating something. You know, I, uh, I really enjoyed it uh, because I had a teacher. He just uh, passed away uh, a few months ago. Uh, he used to give us, you have, to, you have to have a theme. Then once you have the theme, it is a free flow. So uh, it's, it's like yellow brick. The theme gives you the yellow brick road. So mm-hmm. you have to reach the Emerald City. So meanwhile, there will be witches, there will be so many other things will happen. Lions, tigers, all that stuff. So you never know what happens. So that way it is interesting. Um, so, I mean, I, I really enjoyed that process. Uh, but then you take us to the uh, Robin Island and Mandela. And you used that song from Barbara Hendricks. Barbara Hendricks, she's a very, uh, she's a fa- very famous uh, opera singer. Uh-huh. Uh, she's uh, American. Uh-huh. Uh, and she, she, uh, she has uh, sung in many, many uh, big operas. Uh-huh. Uh, also in some uh, films. She played in uh, La Bohème, uh, Puccini's La Bohème, uh, as, a, as a film. Um, uh, she is really great. What happened, in fact, is that when I was editing the film, uh, just after we, after the, the, the Robin Island, I put a song of uh, Miriam Makeba, you know, the famous uh, South African singer. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, but we could not uh, buy the rights of this song. It was too, too expensive. Uh-huh. So my musician, um, said to me, okay, why don't you write something? And then, uh, so I said, okay, I try, I started, I wrote something, in fact, on the same tempo than Miriam Makeba's uh, song, which was uh, quite a big thing. And he said, uh, I wrote it in French. And my musicians say, no, no, we are just coming out of um, Robben Island. Why don't you write something in uh, in English? Uh-huh. So I wrote something in English, and I said, okay, let's go until the end of the process and let's try to have a, a great voice English voice or English speaking voice uh, who is related to apartheid or to discrimination so it was either a South African voice or a, 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 an American voice um, uh, African American uh, so I saw to Barbara Hendricks and uh, I sent her a letter and, and, um, and the music and the, 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 the song and she liked it and so she called me we spoke about the film she wanted to see the film she saw the film and uh, she said okay i'm with you so we went with a musician to um, to uh, sweden because she lives in sweden and we recorded her voice there and uh, now she's in the film that's great, that's great. Uh, 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 then you take us to the uh, some of the native rulers or uh, teachers. So besides Mandela, that is how they, uh, well, we don't have to be told by a white man uh, what is being right or wrong or intelligent or unintelligent. We have our own wisdom. Uh, is that your point with this uh, uh, native uh, people? Who are the teachers, and as well as uh, the, the whatever that president? Yes, yes. You know that's why it's called suns. Suns is uh, it's it stars. There are the lights uh, which uh, give us 
uh, so, so big lights, so big suns, who give us uh, some light in the darkness and then give us some directions. So Mandela is one of them, uh, but uh, this uh, man, La Mizana, also is one of them. Or like uh, Tierno Boca, this, this man who is uh, the teacher with the young, uh, uh, the young kids, is also one of them. And, and um, so, of course, um, in Africa, uh, there are many words of wisdom. What is interesting is that, um, in fact, we, we also, very often we see Africa like a, a something very, if, if people who like Africa often likes, uh, it, like it for uh, its folklore and so on. What we are saying is that, no, no, in Africa, we uh, African uh, people have developed some tools in uh, uh, for the how to live together or about uh, society, about uh, w uh, some wisdoms, about justice and so on that we can use. Uh, as I said before, uh, the, the um, uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission uh, is a tool. Uh, which is a pure product of uh, America, of African justice, and we can use it, uh, Western people, and we now we do it. Um, so it's that kind of thing that we are trying to to say with the film. I think whether uh, in your film or somewhere, uh, they say there were no jails in South Africa until white man came. Absolutely. <laughs> no, uh, uh, and which is, which is true. Uh, you know, I had this impression, and I was not uh, when I was uh, writing it. Um, I'd never uh, read it before, uh, so I was not sure. So I found uh, uh, a, a jurist, um, uh, a lawyer or specialist about law in Senegal, mm -hmm. a young man um, who is a specialist of uh, traditional African law. So we spoke. And I tell them my idea about that, and she said, yes, absolutely, you are right. There were no prison before uh, white people came. So that's interesting. And, uh, and this has gone to several festivals. Uh, I saw a clip of yours uh, where they show it to, uh, uh, like in the open field to the Africans. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. so like, I kind of like that kind of uh, setup. It shows uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a people's movie and people's theater. And so what is next to you, uh, uh, Olivier? I'm, I'm happy with uh, writing and filming. If I can continue to, to write and to make films, uh -huh. uh, I'm, I'm very happy. Okay, whatever oh. makes you happy will make us happy. So I wish you all the best and thanks for coming under the show, Bollywood to Hollywood. Freedom. Freedom. Oh. Walk to freedom